so you talk about you know your time at Princeton and creating and conceptualizing this vision based off of this study. How did you go to market? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, to kind of back it up one step, um, you know, so I got really excited about this really quick, right? So within like a few days of reading the study, you couldn't buy dihydromyrestin in the United States. So I had figured out how to get a kilo shipped from China into the United States, which for the record, if you buy a kilo of something, it comes in like a, a powder brick. Okay. And it's really hard to get it through customs because sure. it just looks like it's like a pound of cocaine or something, right? Al Brooks Powell is on some list. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably. Um, but anyways, I got so excited about it, talked with my uh, neuroscience professor at the time, and I knew I was on to something when he got so excited about it that he scrapped a planned class lecture and lectured <laughs> on this instead. Yeah. Um, and instantly asked, I think this is really cool. How can I be a part of it, right? Um, so for us, most of the main initial steps was figuring out how to manufacture it um, and figuring out how this would sort of certify under the FDA okay. um, so that we could legally sell it. Um, and so really sort of figuring out the supply chain, figuring out how to legally sell it, and then me sort of building my network over the next two years at Princeton, because I discovered it when I was a sophomore, you know, formally sort of founded an LLC between my sophomore and my junior year of Princeton, Got and it. really sent, spent about two years laying the foundation. Um, by the end of my senior year, we had sort of figured out the supply chain piece, right? Figured out how to manufacture it here in the United States um, with a manufacturer that specializes in both nutraceuticals and pharmaceuticals. Um, you know, started doing some initial branding. Originally, the brand was called Thrive Plus. Now it's called Cheers. We can uh, chat about that. But um, basically, it all became very real um, when prior to me graduating from Princeton, I started pitching a lot of angel investors, right, with this idea of, hey, we have this thing. We figured out how to produce the product. People like the product. We've, you know, done patents on it, et cetera. Now it's time for us to really bring it to market. You know, will you give us a few hundred thousand dollars? Um, and so that's when it, like, actually became real is when those sort of wire transfers hit the bank. Yeah. So talk about sales. You talk about selling uh, direct to consumer. What is your, your strategy there for direct to consumer and your mar digital marketing approach? Yeah, I mean, I think for us is that the problem with our product, the, the blessing and the curse of our product is that it sounds too good to be true, right? Like, oh, you're gonna give me this pill or these three pills that I'm gonna pay $3 for and you're saying it's gonna make me feel 50% better, right? Like that, yeah. that sounds like a promise that's too good to be true. Right, so all of our marketing kind of goes around this idea of how do we make sure that people actually believe that value prop, right? Um, you know, believe that this product actually exists for them, right? So a lot of people say, oh, I don't get hangovers, so I don't need your product. But, you know, you went to a happy hour with them the night before and they had like four drinks and you're like, yeah, that guy's probably not work waking up for his 5.30 a.m. workout, right? Sure. He's not going to hurt, hurt the next day, but he's, you know, even 1% or 99% fine is still 1% hungover, right? Therefore, you know, you need to convince people, hey, you actually have a need for this product and there's nothing wrong with that, right? So you have to convince people this product's for them and you got to get them to believe it. And what we've had the most success with is basically like, look, if you don't feel at least 50% better the next day following taking our product, we'll give your money back, no questions asked. Um, and less than 2% of people ever take us up on that offer. And so, you know, that's an offering that we stand by and it's easy for us to do it because it works mathematically and it builds a lot of trust with the consumer.